From placing water in the nether to a secret pet that only pros know how to get. Here are 297 secret Minecraft things you probably didn't know. Did you know in recent Minecraft versions you can actually clutch without any items? All you need to do is hit crouch and space just before landing. And voila! I'm alive! One thing only pros know is if you push yourself into the end portal from underneath with a piston, you won't spawn on the main end island and instead will spawn at your overworld coordinates in the end, which can make tons of super deadly traps. Soul sand already slows your player down a ton, but adding ice below will make you move even slower. But there's a way to be even slower. Cobwebs! You now have the slowest floor known to man. But if you're fast enough, you can actually use a bow and arrow to break minecarts and boats to troll your friends. Just make sure you got good aim, or you might just pull a JF Kennedy. And while we're at it, did you know evokers can turn blue dyed sheep into red dyed sheep? Yeah, pretty wild. Who knew they hated blue? The biggest mistake people make is to mine randomly for the resources they need. You want diamonds? Go to a river. It turns out that if a river has a clay patch, that is a sign there are diamonds below. Start at the center of the clay patch, go two blocks in the Z direction, and mine straight down. You'll be swimming in diamonds. But never mine straight down. If you're not careful, you can break the block below you and fall straight into some lava. So, always mine down with two blocks and have a water bucket so you can clutch. So many people make this simple mistake. Stop making low ceilings! Even when mining, a two block tall staircase tunnel is a recipe for bonked heads whenever you go up or down. Also, doesn't the high ceiling look so much nicer in your house? Who doesn't love farming? But a big mistake people make is to stick a single block of water and surround it in veg. That water can only feed so many plants. So instead, set the water and vegetables in rows and your plants will actually grow faster. Ever see this mob? Because if you have, you're one of the lucky ones. This is called the Clux Room. And yes, it drops mushrooms. This mob was released exclusively for Minecraft Earth. And with a 2% chance of naturally spawning, you don't want to lose this guy. But mushy? Mushy, why? If you're in Minecraft Bedrock Edition and you catch on fire, don't panic! Just craft a campfire, and you can light it for completely free just from standing on it. Oh man, what a good trade-off. Now that's what I call making the best out of a bad situation. In the early versions of Minecraft InDev, you could stack up to 99 items in Minecraft. This was later changed by Notch to the iconic 64 items you can hold today. Hey, you do you, bro. Everyone knows if you hit a zombie piglin in a swarm, it's not gonna be a fun time for you. However, if you manage to one-shot that same zombie piglin with an overpowered weapon, all of the piglins will get confused and stop targeting you, allowing you to finish them off one by one. Hey, it's fine, they're zombies, so die, piglins. Did you know if you splash a potion of poisoning onto a creeper, then let them explode, you'll end up seeing a lingering poison effect? This can be used for blowing up your friend's base and then finishing their dogs off. Thank me later, you monster. If you're near an ocean with your friend, have them crouch down in front of the water and pay attention to their name tag. If you look closely, you can see the water is transparent, allowing you to see anything you want. So if your friend's got a secret base, we will find it, and we will kill your dogs again. Talking about the ocean, if you take an iron golem and try to sink them, you'll realize they literally can't drown. This means they can stay at the bottom of the ocean for years without taking a single hit of damage. Man, that's just sad. What? This can't be said for snow golems, though. They don't even get to enjoy a swim. Man, that just feels wrong. We all know the truth. Trident is the most useless weapon in the entire game, but they actually have a secret use only pro players know. If you charge up a Riptide Trident underwater with a sword in your hand, you'll turn into a supercharged torpedo that can kill almost any sea creature. And if you've got an Elytra, try taking to the skies while it's raining and using the same trick to literally become a missile that destroys any mobs above ground too. Gas tears can be super annoying to collect. I don't think I've ever fought a gas that wasn't over a giant lava pit. That's why the best players bring a fishing rod to the nether that they can use to pull mobs back over dry land to take out with a sword. This doesn't just work for gas either. You can stop these pesky blazers from getting away and it even lets you get sick kills on piglins. That'll teach him for stealing my gold. Enchanting can be really annoying when the bomb slot just shows up with a breaking or an enchant you just don't want. But you can fix it with a wooden shovel. Turns out it's true. If you enchant any useless tool at level one, it'll re-roll the entire set of enchants letting you make the perfect set of gear. One of the most common items you can get in ruined portal chests are these seemingly useless fortune gold pickaxes. This thing will break after like three iron ore. What's the point? Well, if you're in the smartest 0.5%, you'll know that pickaxes don't break when destroying crops, so you can use the fortune enchant to get extra resources from your farm for free. Honey blocks have a crazy feature barely anybody knows about. They're actually just a little bit smaller than a normal block, meaning you can shoot 
arrows between them. They can be later fortress builders. Dolphins are one of the smartest animals in the world, and it's no different in Minecraft. If you give a dolphin enough fish, it'll actually begin to swim to the nearest underwater chest as thank you for feeding it. Endermen are already one of the most creepy and powerful mobs in the game. They absolutely didn't need another buff to make them even stronger, but they got exactly that. Usually an enderman will just teleport out of the way of an arrow or other projectile. First, if they've got nowhere to teleport to, the arrow will just bounce off like it's nothing. Cheaters. Luckily, there is a way to make endermen completely powerless. Yeah, sort of. Sure, you can just place water at your feet, but that's old news. If you accidentally trigger an enderman by looking into its eyes, don't look away. For some reason, endermen won't move at all as long as you hold eye contact. And what do you do from here? Uh, good question. Moving on. Breaking blocks like clay underwater is so annoying! Sure, there's the old door trick, but that's no fun compared to TNT. But Mello, TNT doesn't work underwater! Wrong! All you need to do is place sand or gravel on top before lighting it, and it works perfectly. It barely even damages you. You can actually do the opposite as well. Placing an anvil on top of TNT before lighting it will stop it from breaking any blocks at all. It doesn't even damage the anvil. And again, you take almost no damage from the blast. Friends can be very trusting, leaving themselves AFK in your world. You could play this pretty unknown trick. Set down a composter and fill it up, leaving just three pixels of space. Then push them in and close the door. They'll actually be trapped and can only escape by breaking the whole thing. If your friend has carpet, a wicked trick is to put magma blocks on the floor and cover it with matching carpet. Watch for your friend to come home and watch as they hop around, confused, as they take damage from their beloved carpet. In this super old snapshot, pumpkins have a truly crazy secret. If you spawn in pumpkin stems that have grown further than eight stages, they'll start to turn into this weird furnace plant. This happens because the textures got totally messed up in the files, but I prefer to imagine them growing those fire flowers from Mario. In any official update before 1.8, you could use this illegal fire item to craft chainmail armor. The weirdest thing was that you couldn't even get the fire item, so it was a completely pointless craft. You can get invisible armor in Minecraft. Right now, I'm completely invisible! And all I'm wearing is this suit. To get this amazing armor, all you have to do is type this command and give yourself 100 armor points, the same as a full set of netherite armor, except totally invisible. Brown mushrooms, dragon eggs, and end portal flames all actually give off light, and the respawn anchor will slowly emit more and more light depending on how much glowstone you put into it, which I think is awesome! Zombies are pretty harmless on their own, but when there's dozens of them, they become harder to deal with, so it's absolutely terrifying that every night there's a chance of a literal zombie apocalypse spawning and attacking you and any nearby villagers. If you somehow manage to bring a hoglin through a portal to the overworld, it'll turn into a super gross looking corrupted zoglin. These things will roam around menacingly attacking any passive mob they see. Don't worry me, I'll be angry too if it looked like that. Everyone knows that you can't stack different types of slabs on top of each other. Apparently, if you go to the world border and make a setup like this, you can use a piston and yep, it makes a really cursed looking block. This one's true. Mangrove trees are super cool, especially because they're the only tree that can be grown underwater, right? Well, the propagule is the only thing that can actually be placed down here and works perfectly. Saplings, however, get broken almost immediately. Almost immediately. If you're quick enough, you can actually grow trees down here. This definitely doesn't feel right, but hey, the game's a game. This one says that if you spawn a cat in a witch hut, it'll always be black. I've spawned about 50 of these things in here, and they're all black, so I'll say that's confirmed. And if red isn't your favorite color, harming potions are super useful for taking out those dreaded mobs or enemies. But when it comes to zombies, these potions actually heal them. I suppose they're dead anyway. So if you want to kill a zombie, throw a healing potion at them to damage them instead. Nice attention to detail, Mojang. Turns out locking is easier than you think. As you can add a glass pane to a map to lock it, meaning it won't update if anything changes. This can be great for documenting the progress of your base over time, or creating a permanent design of an upside down T. If you bring bottles with you to the end fight, you can actually pick up the purple particles the dragon shoots at you. These are called potions of dragon's breath, and can be used to craft tipped arrows or lingering potions. I guess we should brush first. Minecraft players all over the world use this incredibly slow method of getting around. People love using bubble columns to zip up to some high tower, but getting down, they use another water shaft. Why waste the time when you can make a shaft, leave it empty, and just have a block of snow or water at the bottom to break your fall? Using shears to collect leaves? Big mistake! You could instead use a hoe, as more modern updates of the game have improved the hoe. And with enchantments like Fortune, you can get way more items, way faster. Path blocks, they look great in a 
lot of spaces, but they're slightly shorter than the average block. If there's any empty space next to a path block, even if another block is on top trying to hide it, the gap will still be there. Look at it, you can see right through that. Piston door lag! It's a big mistake that happens all the time. Pistons pushing blocks out of the way looks so fancy, but takes precious time when you're trying to get through. Put the pressure plate a few blocks back so you don't smash your face on an automatic door or secret entrance. If you're ever being chased by a mugger and quickly want to hide your diamonds, just throw them in grass paths. If you place hoppers under the grass covering, the diamonds will automatically transport into them, making your escape smooth, calculated, and absolutely foolproof. And he's found the hoppers, hasn't he? Oh, come on! Here's a useless fact you didn't know. Wearing a creeper mask reduces the chance of a creeper spotting you by 50%. But don't get too cocky, as they still explode! In Snapshot 15W31A, Mojang pretty much added one of the dumbest things possible. Usually, to respawn the Ender Dragon, you need Ender Crystals. Pretty hard to obtain. That makes sense, right? Well, for this snapshot, you literally could build a clay creeper face, and the dragon would respawn. Yeah, I'm not even joking. I'm baffled. Bamboozled. If an iron golem is low on health, you can heal them by tapping on them with an iron ingot. Don't confuse this with hitting them with an iron ingot, as that will certainly end up killing them, and we don't want that. If you've ever tried building a railroad before, you would have definitely come across a train turn that looks something like this. Well, if you take a look at the corner of the train track, it actually looks very similar to an iron pickaxe. Bet you didn't know that! When a player crafts their first enchantment table and enchants their first weapon, assuming you pick the lowest enchant level on a bow and arrow, the first enchant will always be power one. <sighs> what a useless fact! I don't want power one! <laughs> Ass one. How many times have you tried leaving an animal pen just for all of the mobs to follow you out and escape to the gate? Well, I have a fix! You can use an L-shaped layout like this, a wall block or a carpet to create exits that only the player can use. The best part is that it means I don't have to remember how to craft those stupid fence gates! Spyglasses aren't that useful on their own, but if you use Optifine, you can use that as well to get a super zoom! It's in F1 will remove that annoying overlay too. Ever wanted to learn how to become invincible in Minecraft without armor? If you eat a god apple and then a regular golden apple straight after, you'll keep some of the absorption even after the effect wears off. This means you can repeat this as much as you want to gain literally hundreds of hearts. It doesn't come cheap, but come on, only the top 0.1% smartest people know this. You're rich anyway! You know how you need two water buckets to create an infinite water source? Well, you know nothing! <laughs> Sorry, that was me. But seriously, you only need one now as long as you have either kelp or a cauldron. Using this setup, you can place kelp here to magically create two new sources, and you can use water bottles to fill a cauldron and conjure another bucket full. Setting up a farm for food can be super difficult early game, but there's a hidden cheat code only 1% of people know. If you're brave enough to challenge the nether and make a run to a soul sand valley, you can farm the fossils for tons of bone meal you can bring back with you for a head start on all your farming needs. Silverfish don't seem that dangerous at first, but it's not uncommon to find yourself in a stronghold severely outnumbered in just a few seconds. But silverfish only spawn when a player deals damage to them, meaning you can just use lava or a flint and steel to totally avoid spawning them. And in case you don't have a big enough iron supply to waste on literally blowing up, there's a cheaper alternative in placing TNT on top of a half slab instead. For some reason, this also reduces the blast radius significantly. But unfortunately, you still take quite a lot of damage. Are you one of those weirdos that prefers using donkeys over horses for the extra storage space? First of all, why are you using horses in the first place? It's 2023, man, get an elytra! But secondly, llamas are a way better option. They can have up to 15 inventory slots and form groups of 10 that follow each other around. Using shulker boxes, you can transport up to 4,000 stacks of blocks with you. That's this many blocks, more than you'd ever need. And if you need another reason to make the switch to llamas, check this out. While horses and donkeys just sink like rocks when you try to ride them in water, llamas can swim. You still can't control them or anything, but if you need a fancy pool float or something, llamas work perfectly. Fireworks can be used for a bunch of things these days, but I bet you never thought of making a cannon with them. That's right, fireworks launch from dispensers actually do damage to mobs, meaning firework crossbows are out, and this is the new best way to take out mobs. Although it doesn't look it, villagers can actually wear armor. They can even wear mob heads and pumpkins, but nobody wants to see that. You can use dispensers to equip it to them, and even put enchantments on each piece of armor, including Thorn's enchantment.
God, that's an embarrassing death message. Oh, and by the way, that mob head thing works on piglins too, and it's somehow even worse. Everyone knows how cowardly villagers are, especially around anything that even has a possibility of hurting them. But I bet you never noticed they actually sweat during raids. At least, I heard that sweat. They really don't have much to worry about though, because some of these villagers actually have morals? These scary ex guys called Vindicators refuse to kill baby villagers, so at least when they grow up, they can rebuild the village. Uh, never mind. A real dirty trick only works if your friend puts down signs. Be a little mischievous by moving the signs around and swapping them about. They'll get lost in no time. In a snowy area, try this bounty castle trick. Build a castle with a spot where you need to drop down. Cover the lower area with slime blocks. Cover that with snow. And when your friend drops down onto it, they'll bounce wildly out of control into whatever hazard you want. This trick is simple and classic. Chests don't open when there's a block above them. So put some obsidian on top and watch your friends slowly chip away just so they can access their tools. This next trick requires your very own pet zombie. Put a name tag on them, hide them under your friend's bed, and watch as a game won't let them sleep because enemies are too close by. They actually behave almost exactly the same as a vindicator named Johnny, a secret mob that definitely doesn't keep me awake at night. Here's Johnny! Ah, Grandma, what? If you build an M portal in this specific way and fill the northern frames in last, the M portal will generate in completely the wrong place. If you want it to actually work, you have to place all the frames from the inside. But I think this looks way cooler. If you type flower into the creative menu, it'll only show you these ones. If you want to see all of them, you need to put a hashtag in front. For some reason though, typing hashtag blocks only shows you these four nether blocks. I think I'm having an identity crisis. Think mob farms are the best way to get XP? Think again! Getting achievements actually gives you experience each time you get them. So if you manage to find all the nether biomes, you'll get a nice reward of 19 levels. Speedrunner Feinberg even used this in his all advancements world record to get the levels he needed to enchant his trident. This dude's got like five of my brains in there. Each block in the game has a hardness level that tells you how difficult it is to break or blow up, and it actually hides a pretty crazy secret. If stone has a hardness of 1.5 and obsidian has a hardness of 50, what do you think bedrock would have? A million? Infinity? Turns out it's actually minus one. I'm sure there's some crazy nerdy code reason as to why this is, but come on, look at me. I've got no idea. All my life, I've made this huge enchanting setup with all these bookshelves, but apparently you only need 15 bookshelves in total. Meaning this tiny setup works just as well as this one. And wait, is that actually true? My life is a lie. There are three different types of overworld frog. Warm, cold, and temperate. But supposedly there's a fourth secret frog you can only get in the end. If you take two frogs and lead them to the stronghold, send them through the portal and feed them slime balls, the tadpoles will grow into super frogs. Yeah, I just made that up. They're just normal. Myth busted. This myth says you can shoot fire arrows to the bottom of a lava cauldron, but there's no way that's true. Can you even shoot below them at all? Huh. Wait, I guess it is true. How didn't I know that? Am I stupid or something? But as it turns out, Mojang might want to brush past some older Minecraft snapshots too. As in an old snapshot, you could actually grow furnaces? By using a command to spawn a pumpkin with an impossible growth phase, a furnace would grow out of the ground underneath it. Shulkers can be super annoying when they hit you with their levitation balls. Trust me, I know. But these balls can actually hit other mobs as well, causing them to fly high into the sky. Who knew their balls were so powerful? Not me. Uh, definitely not me. Everyone knows that if you name a sheep Jeb, it will turn rainbow. But most people don't know is that you can actually name a rabbit Toast to unlock Toast! Okay, not really, but it does have a secret texture. It's a reference to a developer's old pet. And although it's not exactly rainbow, at least this guy has meaning, it's common knowledge that dispensers can't place blocks. But did you know that dispensers are actually able to place blocks if it means they can summon a golem or the weather? Dispensing a carved pumpkin on top of two snow blocks will create a snow golem, just as if you place the block there. A pretty cool way to win a bet and scam your friends out of their hand-earned diamonds. Oh, just do it for fun. But come on, who does that? A major mistake when making an enchantment table is forgetting to bring the right items. Make sure any lapis or books are nearby in chests so you don't have to remember at all. Speaking of storage, what on earth is this? Nothing is sorted, it's all just thrown together any which way. Set aside different chests to hold different things. Want tools? Make a tool chest so you know where all your tools are. In fact, stop using chests entirely. They're old and dumb and stupid. Well, all right, they look okay. But barrels carry the same amount. Cost 
less to make and can actually be opened even when another block is on top of it. Don't panic! Really, don't panic when a creeper is coming or TNT is ready to explode. Just put some blocks down in front of you and you'll take way less damage. You can actually send minecarts to the nether. All you have to do is set up train tracks leading directly to another portal. Load those babies up! When they disappear, you can go through the portal and find all the glorious minecarts you sent over. The flower, Lily of the Valley, looks the exact same from any angle you look at it through. It's sort of like a Minecraft illusion, which means the lily is always watching you. Don't kill that baby pig. You know it doesn't give you meat. Don't kill it! Here's a nice trick to try on a blind person. If you cover lava with string, nearby players won't be able to hear the lava, meaning that sucker won't even know what hit him. Oh, I'm such a great YouTuber. Subscribe, by the way. Yes, this is a call to action. The lily is watching you! To cure a zombie villager, you need a splash potion of weakness and golden apple. And a bed? Apparently being near to a bed helps to speed up the process. Not sure why that works. Well, I can think of a few reasons. <laughs> the axolotl is probably the cutest animal in Minecraft. But did you know there's an axolotl so rare, just one in 1,200 axolotls spawn this way. The blue axolotl is the rarest mob in Minecraft. Would you look at that little guy? Huh, you thought I was going to kill it for comedic effect? I'm totally above that. I lied! Evokers are a super powerful mob, despite never hitting you themselves. But you can actually predict what spell they're gonna cast next. If he sends out white particles, it means he's spawning vexes, and you can run and get some hits in. But if they're grey, it means he's summoning fangs, and you should probably run! And before you head through the portal, make sure you bring some TNT, as you can use it to farm ender pearls really easily. Simply build a pillar above a small pit like this, and stare at as many endermen as possible. Once you've trapped enough, place the TNT down and light it for near infinite pearls. You can even hold a looting sword while the TNT explodes to get even more. But what if you're like me? You struggle to even find the stronghold. Speedrunners have a solution. Once you're fairly sure you're nearby, try throwing just a single eye and placing a line of blocks until you think you've run past it. Then head to the side of a line and throw another eye. Follow the path until you hit the blocks from before, mine down, and you'll be right where the stronghold is. You know those huge annoying trees you sometimes get from oak saplings? If you place a single block seven blocks above the sapling, they'll never grow again. You can also use this setup to only get the big ones if you're a psycho. Speedrunners even have ways to make nether portals instantly without diamonds. Find a lava pool like this, then place a block here with water next to it. Break that and place blocks exactly like this on the side of the pool. Place water right here and place lava in the formation of a portal around the side. Remove the water and you've got an instant nether portal with just a single bucket. There's also a way to do it in an underwater ravine, but I'll leave that one to the pros. It's not because I can't do it, okay? You can get floating Minecraft tracks by placing them on trap doors and flipping them down. Aside from this just looking really weird, you you can make some pretty crazy traps with this, as all the rails disappear at once when anything updates them. While testing this, I realize you can actually walk underneath trap doors even though you're way taller than this gap. And your head even sticks into the trap door. Yo, Mallow, is that a fresh cut? No, 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 no please! Shulkers are one of the most mysterious mobs in Minecraft. I can't even figure out what they're supposed to be. But it turns out if you throw an invisibility potion at one, all is revealed. The Shulker's shell disappears, leaving the Shulker itself floating in midair. I'm still no closer to understanding what on earth this thing is, but I guess he's, like, cute. It's common knowledge now that villagers are the best way to farm items, but it takes so long to cure them. But it turns out if you place iron bars near the zombie villager, you can actually speed it up a bunch. The wiki says this works with beds too, but when I tested this, it seemed like it was fake. But let me know in the comments if it works for you. Speaking of beds, did you know that there used to be a sky dimension planned for Minecraft? It was supposed to be a magical realm in the sky that you could access through dreams. Each time you went to sleep, there would be a chance you'd wake up here instead. Unfortunately, this idea was eventually replaced by the end, but I'd love to see them bring back this idea. While well, you were busy having sniper duels or hiding away, praying they wouldn't see you, skeletons have been hiding a dark secret. Okay, it's not that dark, but around 11% of them are actually left-handed and hold their bows differently to the rest. Apparently, this is to mirror the amount of real people who are left-handed. Also, even though wither skeletons can't spawn naturally with a bow, they still have a line of code that lets them shoot fire arrows when they're given one with commands. Weird, right? Have you ever noticed that the sky actually changes color during the weather fight? That's right. As soon as the fight begins, the horizon turns a deep, ashy gray, and some clouds become much darker. Too bad nobody will ever see this because we all fight the weather underground now. Like mole people. I like to call this trick the drip leaf drop. A big drip leaf creates a platform that can hold you up, but it folds soon after. Grow one above a big pit and lead your friend over it. It'll trigger the fold, and no 
yourself all right in? Hey! If your friend is online and you can access a house, play a really weird trick by building an upside down version of their house on top of their regular house. It's a bizarre, mind bending monument that will take time to remove if they even want to. If your friend is a pet dog, a real sadistic trick is to replace it with your own. Hide their dog and name your own dog the same name. Then watch as your friend struggles, wondering why it won't listen to them anymore. You can even hit your friend and watch as they run screaming from the dog they thought was their best friend. Did you know there's a way to get extra inventory space instantly? Simply turn touchscreen mode on and use your number keys to put some items in the crafting grid. Then click off your inventory and you've got four extra slots just like that. Unfortunately, this was patched out in 1.19, but you can still use this feature in any other update. Splash water bottles seem like the most useless item in the entire game, but they're actually the only way to put yourself out in the nether. You can also use cauldrons for this, as water placed in them won't disappear in the nether. This even works the other way around, letting you place lava under water. It's not quite as helpful though. But this isn't even the only way to get fire and water to mix. The other method requires bubble columns and fire charges. If you place a ton of soul sand under water like this, they'll bob around in the water, as if they're not just totally breaking the laws of science. Dripstone technically counts as an entity while it's falling, meaning you can grab it with a fishing rod and yank it mid-air. This doesn't have much use outside of really messing with your friends, but it also works for sand, gravel, and best of all, TNT. Back when beads were added in 1.15, there were actually two secret textures hidden in the files for extra honey items. The first was for a crystallized honey item, and the second was this yellow block called the wax block. These items never made it into the actual game, but it does bring the concept of crusty honey into my head, and I don't like that. Slimes can actually let you duplicate name tags. Well, technically at least. If you use one on a big slime, the name will actually pass down to the smaller ones. And since these things can't despawn anymore, you can use them to really get your message across to a friend. Oh god, there's so many of them! You can use these fire arrows to light TNT, but what else does this work with? Exit projectiles. Do they work? Oh yeah, they do. Snowballs would just melt, wouldn't they? Nope, that works too. Okay, there's no way the fishing rod works too. It does? That's insane! Oh no. Have you ever been to the cinema and had your eardrums blown out by the super loud noise? Well, legend has it this was actually added to Minecraft. If you find a 2% screaming goat, it has a 1 in 4 chance of dropping the call horn. And when you blow it... I'd say that's confirmed. You can make a door with end rods that mobs can't get through. This one's weird because the end rods are thin enough for us to walk through. So why wouldn't mobs be able to? Oh, huh, I guess it works. That's strange. Maybe they see them as full blocks like they do with trap doors? Grindstones remove the enchants from items, so surely it makes sense for it to do the same for a notch apple, right? Oh, I guess not. Why would you even want to do that? Wait, what if I put an enchantment on it with an anvil and then put it in the grindstone after? There we go. I'll call that one a maybe. Most players beat the ender dragon by taking out all the the crystals and then hitting it with a sword. But excuse you? I watched Dream back in the day and not only have I seen his face before he put the mask back on, but even I know that you can skip this process entirely by waiting for the dragon to perch and then using beds to blow it up. Take that, American military! Cactuses are able to destroy items when thrown at them, but they are the only block that can do this. Dropping an anvil on some items from four blocks or higher will instantly destroy those items. Pretty cool. The invisibility potion is great for hiding from your friends or to sneak past mobs, but for some reason, villagers will still look at you. Even if you're completely invisible. The same thing happens with enchanting tables. So if you're trying to spy on your friends, make sure a villager don't snitch on you. It's so much fun finding buried treasure, but where is it? I'm at the X. Everyone makes a mistake of just guessing the X exactly is pointing, but you might be off by a few blocks. So to be absolutely sure, look at the coordinates in the chunk selection. The treasure will always spawn at 9-9 for that chunk. It should be straight down. The nether is where mistakes can be deadly. It's very easy to catch fire, and water disappears instantly. Or does it? The big mistake people make is not bringing a cauldron and buckets of water. Even in the nether, water in a cauldron will not disappear. So when you catch fire, put yourself out with this cool trick. A big mistake is to not keep up with what's changed in game updates. In version 1.18, they even changed the way diamonds spawn. It used to be that diamonds mostly showed up between depths 5 to 12, but now you'll find them showing up more and more all the way down to bedrock. A mistake that has taken millions of lives is digging under sand and having it fall on your head. The best way to avoid dying is to put a torch under any falling blocks. Any sand or gravel that falls on the torch breaks instantly. Sand or gravel count as entities when falling down, meaning dropping it into a portal will build a nice little sandcastle. Not only that, but you can do the same with lit TNT and even dripstone. If you hit a zombie piglin next to a nether portal in the overworld, an extra zombie piglin can spawn from the nether, even if one isn't nearby. So how does that work, Mojang? Hmm? Care to explain yourself on that one? Your trident will always 
always come back, as you have the loyalty enchantment. However, if your entire inventory is full while throwing it, it won't come back to you and will leave you forever. Or it will do whatever this is, which probably counts as some kind of assault. That's a lawsuit waiting to happen. If you feed a cookie to your parrot in Minecraft, they will die. No joke. I feel bad for the kid that figured that out. Well, this wasn't always in the game. Mojang later realized cookies are actually toxic to parrots. So change the game to be more realistic. So if your friend gets a new parrot, you know what to bring. Woohoo! In Minecraft's April Fool's update, Mojang added an item called the Ankle Monitor, which when put on, works like the curse of binding making you unable to take it off and slower whilst wearing it. Minecraft Hood Edition coming out in 2023, where the skeletons are one of the most annoying mobs to farm in Minecraft. They don't even spawn half the time. But if you're in single player, try lowering your render distance and simulation distance to five chunks. This will force all mobs to spawn where you can see them, letting you find farm skulls way easier. Once you're ready to fight the weather, whatever you do, don't spawn it above ground. Trust me. I learned the hard way. Instead, dig a 40 block long tunnel underground and spawn it in a chamber at the end. If you stay at a safe distance, you'll be able to take it down super easily without getting hit once. Well, good play as well. Cakes aren't really the best food source, but they do work as a great decoration. But did you know they're even better now with the addition of candles? Now you can place a candle on top of the cake to add just a little bit extra color to the room. For redstoners, slimes are super valuable, but they can be so hard to find. Swamps are usually the best place to look for them, but sometimes you'll go just to be met with nothing. Well, it turns out that's because slime spawns in swamps are actually based on the moon. So if the swamp is dry, try Try waiting a few nights until it's full, and the swamp will be covered in the things. It can be really hard to find exactly where the buried treasure is once you're nearby. The map isn't really clear, but if you think you know the general area, hit F3 and make these two numbers say 9 by moving to the right block. Dig down, and voila! Seven fish and an emerald. Right. Putting carpets on top of fences lets you jump over them while keeping animals in. But did you know there's an even better way of doing this? Animals can jump over trap doors just fine going one way, but if they try to leave, they walk straight into them. This makes it 100 times easier to collect animals and get in and out your pen without 1,000 chickens escaping through the gate. Oxalotls are up there with bees for the cutest mob in Minecraft. They come in these four normal colors and one super rare shiny blue axolotl that's actually a reference to the Pokemon Mudkip. And speaking of fish, kind of? Some cruel player discovered that if you take fish out of their favorite aquatic home and place them on a bunch of slime blocks, they'll start to bounce really high super fast. However, it's not likely to last long as there's a few, shall we say, occupational hazards for our bounty swimming friends. The only thing I like more than this little guy has to be the frogs that got added in 1.19. I just wanted to show you what its eating animation looks like in slow motion. That's it. That's the fact. We're all pretty aware of Minecraft's food chain now. Creepers hate ocelots, foxes hate chickens and rabbits, Mallow hates dogs, but one toxic relationship you probably don't know about is that polar bears hate foxes. It doesn't usually go too well for the polar bears though, as foxes are way faster. And because foxes can step on powder snow just fine, the bears are sometimes baited in and get stuck. On the topic of foxes though, I have to know. Am I stupid for not knowing this next one? Foxes don't just attack rabbits and chickens by walking up and biting them. They also sneak up and pounce on them by jumping super high into the air. What's crazier is that if they land on snow, they'll actually get stuck and shake around trying to free themselves. I swear these guys have been in the game for ages and I've never seen this. I must be an idiot, right? Slime blocks, honey blocks, and hay bales can all be used to reduce fall damage when using a drop shoot. But they all have drawbacks. Instead, put a waterlogged chest at the bottom. You won't take any fall damage, you don't bounce, and it doesn't slow you down. If your friend wants a nice oxidized copper roof trick them by secretly waxing the copper blocks with honeycomb. They'll be waiting for days wondering why it's not turning that lovely shade of green. Check out this infinite lightning rod. If you can trap your friend in a room above one, see how long they can survive as lightning constantly strikes around them. Bring extra difficulty by dropping hostile mobs in with them. This deadly trick is devilishly simple. If your friend uses water to jump great distances, put a blue tinted block over the water. It totally blends in and you can watch as your friend slams into it at full speed. You see these weird little scribbles on the end crystal? It turns out if you look super closely, they actually kind of spell out Mojang. Powder Snow has made mountain biomes actually kind of dangerous now, and ain't nobody got time to wear leather boots out here. But there is another way to deal with it. Next time you venture out to the snowy slopes, grab yourself a flame bow, as any Powder Snow you hit with a fire arrow will instantly melt and disappear. Glow Lichen actually has a secret use I guarantee you didn't know about. It can actually completely block water from flowing. 
just the same as signs or pressure plates. But more importantly, it can do the same with lava and won't ever burn. Even though it's a plant. Hmm. I give up. Seed pickles are one of my favorite plants in the whole game. But a lot of people seem to forget you can place them outside of water. They won't give off light anymore and lose their little pickle stem thing, but they do make for a nice decoration or extra piece of color somewhere in your build. Oh, and you can place paintings behind them too. What's even crazier than this though is that you can also place lily pads outside of water too. Kind of. As long as the block is waterlogged, you can place them down. This means they can go on trap doors, scaffolding, slabs, drip leaves, leading to some really cursed effects. They can also be placed on ice, which is like, I guess, waterlogged? I really don't know anymore, man. In Minecraft Bedrock, zombified piglins have a very small chance to spawn into the other world when a nether portal is first lit, which can make for a very scary surprise. Some players, however, have capitalized on this to make overpowered piglin farms that give infinite gold and resources. When you load an arrow or firework rocket into a crossbow, it'll update the icon to your hotbar to let you know which one it has in it. But if you drop the crossbow on the ground, the crossbow no longer shows what item it has in it, at least until you pick it up again. So try not to drop your firework crossbow into a pile of normal ones. <laughs> okay, let's be honest, no one is doing that. You should hide at night to protect yourself from monsters, right? Well, not if you're on the rare mushrooms biome. It would be a mistake to waste those nighttime hours, because hostile mobs just don't spawn on mushroom biomes, unless there's a monster spawner. One mistake is not getting a cat. It turns out creepers hate cats and will run if there are too many around your home. Plus, look how cute they are. Aww. Stop using powered rails. They're expensive and unnecessary. If you really want that speed boost, saddle up a pig and put it in the rail cart. No, I'm serious. Riding the pig in the minecart while pushing forward lets you move almost as fast on normal rails as you would on powered ones. Using a furnace for your food is a big mistake. Use a campfire. It doesn't need any fuel. And even if the fire gets put out, you can use a silk touch shovel to recover it and the fire will be lit again. Want an easy way to find netherite? Try this out. All you need is a fire resistance potion, a few blocks, and a grindstone. After jumping into the lava, swim upwards to see through the entire thing. And ta-da! Enjoy your ban. If you stack minecarts on a singular rail, you can create a nuclear bomb! The minecarts will glitch out and move on their own. Try getting rid of the rails? Well, the minecarts don't care! In fact, it'll keep on going and blow up an entire village if it wants. What a rebel. While night vision is usually very useful, if you splash yourself with a night vision potion in the end, everything will instantly turn pink. Thanks, guys. That helped a lot. Well done. The Minecraft soundtrack changes depending on what time of day it is, meaning if you want a certain soundtrack to play, just use the command and change it back to the time of day you remember it playing at. Oh man, this track is so beautiful. <laughs> Oh, who said it today? Who? Huh? I know karate! Because soul sand isn't a full block, you can't really place falling blocks on top of it. Or at least without having your blocks turn into fragile block entities. If you've ever created a staircase, you'd realize how annoying it is to have to go up and down and back up again. Who invented stairs? I will fight you! But there's a way out of the never-ending pain. Because if you place a torch on the block you're using, you can place a block on the side. And if you keep recycling your torches, you'll soon enough have a really long staircase. Just don't look at it from the side. The best way to move villagers isn't to use minecarts or boats. It's actually just to use a bell. Villagers will all flock to a bed whenever a bell is rung. So if you remove all nearby beds and place just one wherever you want them to head to, they'll go straight there as soon as the bell is rung. Clever, isn't it? What's even smarter is this invisible elevator that uses wind. Crazy, right? Huh. Uh, you didn't see that. Okay, fine. It's not a wind elevator, but it's still really cool. If you place a bubble stream in a corner behind two honey blocks and then maps in item frames on the honey blocks, you'll create a hidden elevator that really does look like magic. Sometimes you just need a ton of filler blocks for a project. So what's the fastest block to farm in bulk? Well, you can obviously build gigantic wood, cobblestone, or moss farms. But if you just want something simple, try trapping a snowman and using stone shovels to instantly obtain hundreds of snow blocks you can use for whatever your heart desires. If you've ever built an enderman farm, you know it can be pretty tiring to constantly click on enderman to get XP. But did you know that splash water bottles actually hurt enderman? That means if you get them low with full damage, you can just chuck one every so often to gain tons of XP and infinite satisfaction. I could literally do this for hours. Speaking of splash potions, have you ever noticed that you don't get quite as much effect time as a potion says? Well, that's probably because you're throwing them at the ground or a wall. If you throw them straight up so they land on your head, you'll get the full advertised time. Which huts have the ability to spawn, you know, witches. But also, each time one is generated, a black cat will also spawn inside. They do have a tendency to walk off, but this is actually one of only two ways to find this sleek variant of Kitty. The only other way 
always wait until a full moon and venture out into a village, where each cat has a 50% chance of spawning as this magical black version. Have you ever run out of gold for powered rails because you never collect it when you're caving? Don't worry, so has literally everybody else that plays this game, but that means there's a solution! Putting a saddled pig in the minecart makes it go much faster on iron rails. It's kind of weird because you have to press the backwards key to move forwards, but it works just fine otherwise. Piglins are primal, tribal creatures and do everything together as a group. Most people know they hunt down hoglins together, but you probably didn't know that there's a small chance that they'll dance together after taking one out. In Bedrock Edition, if you name a boat in an anvil, it'll actually show up as a name tag above. Cool, right? I bet Java Edition has an equally cool mechanic. Oh, it doesn't show up. And it's gone completely. This boat is actually a trick. When you get in, it explodes into as many boats as you want. To make it, just pour a ton of boats into a hopper that drops into a dispenser on repeat. It will place boat after boat after boat into the same spot on the water. Then you should break the machine apart and watch the chaos from afar as your friend tries to get in. A dirty trick to swipe their goods is to hide a hopper underneath their furnace. Their new smelted ingots fall right into your evil clutches. Keep those stolen goods out of sight by hiding them in chests. These actually have a limit and how far they can be before the game stops showing them. So if you put them all the way to the top of the sky above the clouds, your friend will never find what you took. Oh, and speaking of lily pads, the direction they face depends on the location of the block and not the way you look when placing them down. It changes block to block and seed to seed, meaning you can never predict which way a lily pad will face. You know how you can preload crossbows with an arrow or firework? Well, it turns out you can do this in bulk. Fill your inventory up and then spam drop and fire the crossbows to turn yourself into a literal machine gun in Minecraft. If you look closely, all of the regular tools in the game have a regular brown stick for their handle as they're all made with overworld materials and wood. But the netherite tools instead come with a darker crimson handle, reminiscent of what a crimson stick would look like. It's nothing crazy, but it's cool to see the attention to detail Mojang sometimes shows. In 1.19.2, there was a glitch that allowed you to completely bypass fall damage. If you jumped from 35 blocks or higher and hit crouch at exactly the right time, you'd be able to walk away like nothing happened. Ow! It's really hard though! Obviously, Obviously, we know that piglins in the overworld turn into zombified piglins, and hoglins turn into zoglins. But what do you think piglin brutes turn into? An armored zombified piglin or some superpower mutant boss? Nope, just a regular zombified piglin. He gets to keep the axe though, so he's got that going for him, I guess. Speaking of golden apples, apparently there's always one single golden apple in this chest right here. And it's actually the key to a secret room in the ancient city. If you take it down here and eat it in this exact spot, this door will open. All that's inside is a bunch of redstone stuff I don't understand, but hey, it's true. And if we head back up, there's this huge abandoned portal looking thing right in the middle of the city. But have you actually seen anyone like this thing before? Here we go. It works. Let's see where it takes us. Oh, just another. Probably because this is actually just obsidian. This one's false. Apparently, you can actually make two block jumps with cactus or fire damage. You just have to time it perfectly. God, the, but I did it! I've heard you can do it with a bubble column too. Oh yeah, that's way easier and much less painful. Mob heads are extremely rare, but most players never even bother to collect them. Well, that changes today! Did you know that wearing a zombie head actually reduces their detection range by 50%, allowing you to blend in with them and live out your days as a zombie? I love brains. Did you know it's actually possible to ban yourself from a single player world? All you have to do is cram a bunch of weird text into a book, then fill an entire shulker box with them. The information is just too much for Minecraft to handle. So it'll just ban you. I'm not sure why you'd want to do this, but hey, it's possible. Curing a zombie villager takes forever. But what most people don't know is you can actually speed up this process. For whatever reason, placing beds and iron bars around the villager will actually speed up the curing process by about 4%. Which sure isn't that much, but hey, every second counts. If you think placing water in the nether is impossible, well, you're wrong. On this specific Minecraft snapshot, Mojang messed up and accidentally allowed players to bring water into the nether. If you place a piece of glow lichen in water, then shear the glow lichen and silk touch, placing this piece in the nether would cause water to start flowing everywhere, allowing me to fulfill my dreams and create a water paradise. Okay, just joking, this is a texture pack. Foxes can hold items in their mouths, but they won't just hold the item. After a while, they'll attempt to eat it if it's a food item. This means foxes are able to teleport when eating a chorus fruit, and if they eat something like a suspicious stew, they'll actually gain the effect from that as well. <laughs> just about everyone knows that sticks are a terrible fuel source when it comes to smelting items, but if you pour and that's all you have, I got you covered. Use a craft table to turn them into ladders, which will make your sticks much more effective as a fuel source. It's so easy to get lost in Minecraft. It even happens to me sometimes. But if you make a banner, name it using the anvil, then use the map on it, it'll show up on your map. Plain as day. Now I just have to find my anvil to get started. Hmm, why did I put that?
Wanna loot a desert temple? Do not forget your water bucket. It's really useful if you accidentally step on that central pressure plate. Dig through it to expose the TNT, then pour that water on top. The first TNT will explode, but won't damage anything, or ignite the other TNT. This trident with Riptide is great for the high jump, but a big mistake people make is using it in deep water. You actually do much higher jumps in a one-block deep puddle. The sniper duel achievement can be really hard to get normally, but this is Minecraft. Get creative! Trap a skeleton in a hole, put a block above its head, shoot the block with arrows, put a sticky piston there, connect a switch 50 blocks away, pull the switch, the block moves, the skeleton dies, and you get your shiny new achievement. Try this spooky trick with your good friend Johnny. Name tag a vindicator with that name, and they go nuts, killing everything they see. Turn them invisible and set them loose in the neighborhood. First, your friends will see animals dying, then suddenly they'll start getting hit as Johnny turns on them. Hide behind a tree and play a goat horn to add scary sound effects. If your friend is showing off their riches with shiny gold blocks, Play this funny trick by replacing them with yellow concrete blocks. See how long it takes for them to notice. Use an anvil to change their name, and you can replace the blocks they hide in their chest too. We've all felt the disappointment of not receiving rainbow wool from a jeb sheep, but apparently if you surround a wool block with eight different dice, you'll finally get it. Ugh, never mind, there's that disappointment again. My bad. But speaking of dyes, I was told that the white tulip doesn't actually give you white dye. The red, orange, and pink tulips all give you the right dye. But yeah, the white one doesn't. I absolutely love alleys, and it turns out they're even better than I thought. Apparently, they're totally immune to our attacks while holding an item. If you punch them normally, they'll just run away. But if you throw them an item, literally nothing can hurt them. These things are just so cute. But alleys aren't the only mob that can pick up items. Zombies and foxes can too. So let's try giving each of them a totem of undying and see if they can use them. Okay, zombies can, which is just terrifying. And foxes can as well. But what about alleys? I feel truly horrible doing this, but let's try it out. Oh, thank God. I wouldn't have been able to live with myself. Ever seen this before? Well, if you're from the future, then maybe. Because Mojang added bamboo blocks in the recent 1.20 snapshots, having both bamboo and stripped bamboo as separate blocks. I like saying bamboo. 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 The old bamboo block required four bamboo to craft, while the new one needs nine. This makes them pretty expensive, but at least your house will look cool. If you have a pet axolotl and don't have a name tag to make him your pet, you can scoop him up with a bucket and literally put him into an anvil. But don't worry, we aren't gonna murder him. If you're in a village raid but don't manage to kill all the raiders, that's a cool way to easily find them. If you ring the village bell and wait a few seconds, all remaining raiders within a 40 block radius will all light up with a glowing effect. This one is already semi-known, but hey, your boy's gotta eat. Did you know not all skeletons hold the bow in the same hand? In fact, 11% of the skeletons are left-handed, while 89% are right-handed. Mojang paid close attention to detail here, as this is the exact proportional percent in real life. If you drop a sword near a fox, they can actually pick it up. This means if a fox is holding a sword while attacking, it'll deal the same damage as the sword, making it incredibly overpowered. The wither is definitely not the friendliest of mobs, but if you've always wanted to befriend the guy, there's a way! A secret April Fool snapshot called the Love and Hugs update oh, so cute. turns the wither into a friendly pink mob that actually heals everything around it. Who knew he had such a soft side? I love you, Withy. That's his name. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but amethyst clusters and geodes actually produce light. It's not a very bright light, but if you wanted to create a bar with ambient lighting, it actually works pretty well. If you're looking for a creative way to get lots of colorful wool for your survival world, one of the best places to look is actually uh, woodland mansions. As it turns out, these mansions can have up to 13 different colors of wool blocks inside of them. Just make sure you don't bring shears though. Dad! Try this pit trap as a dirty trick to play. Dig a huge hole, put up a bunch of scaffolding to cover the top, cover that with snow, and put a little treat in the center. Hide at the bottom and wait for them to take the bait. Then hit the scaffold and watch them tumble down to their death. Here's a trick they might not notice at first, but will hate when they notice. Dig out the blocks under your friend's house, then put path blocks all around it. Path blocks are slightly smaller, so the gap will show the empty underside of their house, but only if you're looking carefully. Once they notice, they'll see it everywhere. This will also help with this truly terrible trick. This gap under the house will fill up with monsters as they spawn in the dark. When your friend least expects it, will hear the growl of a zombie dangerously close, and would have no idea where it's coming from. Apparently, you can repair iron golems. If you see one or cracked up after a fight, you should be able to take some iron ingots and right click on it. Hey, yeah, it fixes it right back up. That's super cool. I recently learned you can place beds underwater. Well, what's the point if you can't sleep in it? I mean, surely I can't hold my breath down here for eight hours. I'd. Oh.
I guess I can. Okay, but obviously that doesn't work under lava. It's, what the hell, Mojang? In real life, people think coal and diamonds are both made out of the same thing. This means that if you apply enough pressure, like with a piston, you can literally turn coal into diamonds. And surprise, surprise, it doesn't work. Probably because it's not even true in real life. It's a myth there too. Double busted. It's been forever since we got a new note block sound, but apparently Mojang secretly added a new one just recently. All you have to do is place them on top of an iron block and right click them 64 times each. Then when you activate them, Oh god, why? Since the addition of Deep Slate and all the new caves, strip mining has pretty much become a thing of the past. Thankfully, there's a few ways to make it way easier. Firstly, this number on the F3 screen shows you exactly how many air blocks are ahead of you. Meaning, the higher this number is, the more likely it is there's a cave in that direction. And to make it easier to find exactly where it is, try turning on subtitles. Not only will it make it easier to see which sounds are being played, but it'll even give you arrows pointing in the direction they're coming from. Raiding in cities can get pretty dangerous very quickly if you find yourself floating high above the ground. And that's why the best players know to always carry chorus fruit. If you find yourself in this perilous position, eating one will instantly teleport you down to the ground safely. Just make sure you still got the levitation effects. It doesn't go well otherwise. Sometimes a regular fuse of a TNT just isn't long enough to get you to safety. So if that's the case, try crouching and setting the block on fire instead. Instead of instantly lighting, it'll burn for a bit before lighting. Trust me, this isn't a troll. Trust me. I'll never do anything like that. Anyway, did you know trains actually exist in Minecraft? And I'm not talking about Minecraft. Well, technically they're called caravans, but if you attach a lead to just one llama, all nearby llamas will quickly run into formation and start following you around. With enough patience, you can breed llamas to have 15 slots of storage space, meaning you can carry around 150 shulkers worth of items with just a single lead. And when you're done with these llamas, if you attach the least one to a fence and then, uh, d dispatch it, it'll lead the lead on the fence, giving you an extra bit of detail to decorate with. Getting caught in a raid can be a nightmare, but don't make the mistake of fighting off the enemies in open combat. Just dig down! In a three-block hole, you can hit the Ravager, but it can't hit back. Want to sneak first? Use Swift Sneak correctly. If you sprint, jump, then sneak as you land, your Swift Sneak movement will actually be going one block faster every second than you would sneaking normally. If you find yourself in a cold biome and want to make a farm, you can! But don't make the mistake of using open blocks of water. Use waterlogged leaves instead, because these don't freeze like water does. Ladders take a lot of wood to make. And when you're exploring, you might make the mistake of wasting wood for no reason. Instead, grab a friend, get some shields, and start punching each other. The knockback can launch you six blocks into the air with some real speed. Did your friends store their enchantment books and ordered chests? Play a trick by replacing some of their high-level books with level one books. They all look the same, so they might not even notice until it's already too late. No matter how many chickens your friend clears away, more keep coming with this next trick. Stuff a bunch of chickens above a hopper. The eggs go into a dispenser with a repeater causing it to shoot the eggs out, spawning a bunch more chickens in the process. Hide this contraption in a tree near your friend's house, and he'll be drowning in chicks. Wanna trap your AFK friend in a little box? It's the first trick anyone tries, but if you waterlog the blocks, it becomes so much harder to break. And when they do, your friend will be drowning in water. Camels look just delightful when they're walking around. <laughs> yeah, look at their little ears, I love them. Apparently cauldrons can totally absorb full damage. If they're filled with water, surely I won't die. Oh, okay, what if I actually try to get in the middle? Well, that, even that doesn't work! I literally fell into water. Fine, if that doesn't work, what if I try without water? It works! They even bounce you. Crazy, right? I'm just kidding. These are slime blocks. Tricked you though, didn't I? Whenever you try to run underwater, you just get put into the swimming animation. But apparently, this changes when you run on mud. Hey, it's true. I think this is because mud is just a little bit shorter than a regular block. So it should work with soul sand too, right? Oh, wait, bubbles, yeah. I'm not smart. Speaking of mansions, vindicators will stop at nothing to murder entire villages worth of villagers. But they're not completely heartless. Even though they're happy to kill tons of adult villagers, vindicators will actually refuse to target baby villagers. But that isn't going to slide in my book. Because there's actually a way around this. If you're on Bedrock Edition, naming a Vindicator Johnny will turn him into a psychopath and he'll go on a rampage regardless of age. That's more like it. Cave noises have been the number one enemy of my soiled underpants. But did you know you can actually predict exactly when these will happen? Simply press F3 and wait for the mood percentage to hit 100% and when it does, the sound will play. Or just turn your sound off. I'm still not taking the risk. When it's snowing outside, snow layers will pile up on top of all the blocks around you. Sometimes even stacking up to the size of a full block. But for some reason, there are two blocks in the entire a game that this doesn't happen to. Both ice and packed ice are immune to snowfall, and even trying to manually place them on them doesn't work. This isn't the case with blue ice though, even though they're almost the exact same. Your friend keeps cutting down your favorite tree? Get revenge with this new trick. Hide anvils in the trunk among the leaves. If someone cuts through enough of the tree, the anvil will fall right on top of them. This silky little trick is great if your friend has a fear of spiders. Fill their house with cobwebs, making them slowly trudge through their own home. Then put a single spider in their bedroom to attack. When they complain, just blame the spider. 
Why doesn't burn scaffolding? So try this trick on a friend trying to break your stuff. Put scaffolding in your house that looks like you use it as a ladder. At the top, put some lava and hide it from view. If your friend wants to be mean and break your scaffold, they'll be greeted with a face full of lava. This next evil trick is quick and easy. Wait at the top of a bubble stream shaft. Shoot a bunch of arrows of harming into the top. And when your friend gets to the top, they'll get hit and maybe even die. This naughty little trick is also really simple. If your friend boasts about their log cabin, go around their house, tripping a block here and there at random. It will look dreadful. You can actually use enchanting tables as a way to catch intruders in your base. Anyone trying to snoop around and steal your items is probably going to be invisible. But the enchanting table's magical powers actually show you there's someone nearby by opening up and facing straight towards them. Grandma, what are you doing in my house? Oh, right. Ah! Every single item in the game has a shape that goes from the bottom left of the item slot to the top right, from tools to fences, name tags, and even amethyst shards. That is, except for the echo shard, which does the exact opposite and faces the other way. I love this feature because it shows that the item really is an echo of the regular items and could even come from some strange alien world. Ever wondered what causes those creepy cave sounds to play? It's actually not random. It relies on this section of the F3 screen called Mood that increases over time when you're underground and decreases when you're near light. When it gets to 100%, a random cave sound will play and it'll reset back to zero. There are actually four secret paintings hidden in the game files that you can't even get normally in the game. The paintings are earth, wind, fire, and water, and can only be spawned in with this command. Apparently, they were only added in to promote Pocket Edition, but I really hope they get added in fully eventually, as they're so much cooler than this. Tinted glass is the only glass block that actually drops an item when you break it normally. I guess the Amethyst enchanted it with mystical powers. Does blowing up ores give you XP? I know it gives you 100% of the resources now, but I've never dared to mine diamonds with it. Oh yeah, it does give XP. I think I'll stick to my pickaxe though. This just feels wrong. Apparently, you can't spawn weathers in snowy biomes. Yeah, snowy tiger, frozen peaks, and even snowy beaches don't work. Wait, what if you break the snow layers below? Ah, there! Myth busted! It works! I should probably run away now. According to this myth, there's actually a time where looking in an enderman's eyes is a good idea. Obviously, they became aggressive when you first look at them, but from now on, whenever you lock eyes, they'll freeze completely in place. I don't know what you do from here, but hey, this myth is true! I bet you didn't know that after using a sponge, if you put in a furnace and use a lava bucket as fuel, you will receive not only your dry sponge in return, but the water bucket and the fuel slot will be filled right back up with water. Nice attention to detail, Mojang. Most players know that there are two types of cows, regular cows and mushrooms. But what most people don't know is that there's actually a secret hidden third type of cow. During a thunderstorm, if a mushroom is struck by lightning, it'll turn into the ultra rare brown mushroom. This special type of mushroom can give you suspicious stew instead of the boring old mushroom stew that a regular mushroom gives. Gross. For some reason, when turtles are struck by lightning, they turn into wooden balls? What the? What is this, Mojang? Almost everybody knows that sunflowers in Minecraft always face east. But there's actually another plant that does this kind of similarly. Pumpkin stems will always point northwest. Eating berries is a mistake. The bushes are decoration at best and they're actually one of the worst food types in the game, filling you less than even raw beef. Your chest need protecting. Don't make the mistake of letting creepers destroy them. To be totally sure they're safe, waterlog the chest. The water will protect it. And the creeper would have exploded for nothing. It's always a mistake to come unprepared, especially in the ancient city. Bring slow fall potions because you can jump through the city from any height. And if you stay in a straight line, you won't trigger the sensors. In creative mode, people always make the mistake of not using all 10 of their hotbars. That's right, 10. In creative mode, you can save your hotbar to a number. Save your hotbar using the C key and the number you want it saved to. Press X and that same number to access that hotbar in an instant. Fungus is your friend with this next trick you can play on your friends while they're away. Dig under their home. Plant a bunch of mushrooms and add a little bit of bone meal. The mushrooms will grow massive, cutting through your friend's house and deleting anything in its path. Give them a fungal infestation. This trick is sneaky. If your friend lives near a forest, slowly plant more and more trees closer and closer to their house. They'll think it's just a forest growing as it eventually surrounds their house. Keep planting trees in every block you find until they're in a thick, never-ending jungle. If you replace the leaves of a tree with some of your own you've snipped, those leaves will stay even if your friend breaks the wood blocks away, leaving these floating leaf islands that your friend will want to clean up to get them out of the way. Only the richest players can test this myth out. Apparently, nether stars are disappoint when you explode them. It feels so wrong to do this, but let's try it. Hey, it actually works. You can even do it with stacks of them without losing any. I bet you can even put them in item frames and oh no. This works because it would really suck if you killed a wither and the star got blown up by the final skull. But what if you were fighting it near lava? Would you still be safe? Nope. Easiest bust yet. Apparently, armor doesn't actually protect you from potions of harming. Okay, so I take six hearts without any armor. Let's try with full diamonds. Yeah. 
<laughs> Look, six hearts as well. Okay, what about with full protection? Four. Now it's just two hearts. I guess I may as well just use leather armor now. Myth confirmed. Dirt and grass blocks appear to be basically the same. But something you might not have noticed is that grass blocks actually take a tiny bit longer to mine than dirt blocks. The same is also true for stone and cobblestone. Even though they seem to be the same thing, cobblestone takes just a little more time to mine. Bet you didn't know that. You can actually equip villagers with armor by shooting it onto them with a dispenser. You won't see the armor appear on the villager, but they'll get all the effects from it, including not just increased defense, but all the enchantments as well. If you're starting a new world and looking for diamonds, this tip will save you tons of time. For whatever reason, diamonds are more likely to spawn below big pools of water on the surface, meaning you don't even need to risk running through big caves to find them either. Just be careful, because digging straight down never seems to end well. If they have an auto smelter, a simple yet wicked trick is a little sabotage. Clog up the works by putting dirt in the furnaces. They can't smelt it, so they'll be stuck here until your friend cleans them out by hand. String trip wire can block bamboo and sugar cane from growing, and is invisible! Use it in this wicked trick. Put it on your friend's farms, and see how long it takes them to notice that bamboo just isn't growing at all. An even better trick to play on AFK friends is to build a whole portal around them. It'll send them to the nether, and once you break the portals on either side, they'll be crying out, wondering how they even got here. Did your friend live near a village, play a fun little trick by putting name tags on all the villagers. Name them with taunts and jokes about your friend, and watch them wonder why all the villagers are so mean. Wanna trick your friend who just got a brand new set of netherite tools? Enchanted stone tools look a lot like the netherite set, so why not get some efficiency one stone equipment and swap them over? They won't need the netherite ones, right? No matter how many are nearby or how close they're watching you, if you one-shot a zombified piglin using something like a smite five sword, other piglins won't get mad at you. Just make sure you don't have sweeping edge on too. Walls don't have much of a use other than, you know, being walls. And to be fair, nobody even really uses them for that either. Either way, they actually have a use in redstone. With a setup like this, you can place a single wall right here to instantly send a signal hundreds of blocks down. I know that doesn't sound that insane, but I know like 1% of you guys are freaking out right now. Mobs in Minecraft have gotten pretty good at pathfinding, but there's still one thing they can't seem to understand, and that's minecart rails. For whatever reason, if you surround yourself in tracks, zombies just don't know what to do and will freeze on the spot. The same goes for spiders, Indicators, iron golems, and even crit. Wait, wait, wait! But when you've got this many nether stars, what do you even use them for? You obviously don't need this many beacons. Well, this myth says that if you use a nether star and a beacon instead of iron or emeralds, you'll actually receive double the effects. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to work. But come on, Mojang, you may as well add this for the people that are insane enough to use netherite to power their beacons. They deserve something! Even though it's easily the scariest biome in the game, it's said that mobs won't spawn in the deep dark at all. And I spent about five minutes flying around here, and I didn't see any, so I'll just call this confirmed. Obviously, there's still one mob that can spawn here. But you can even totally disable this as well with this command. Suddenly, this place isn't so scary. Most people only place carpets on, you know, the floor. But they can actually be placed in way more places than you realize. Above string, water, slabs, buttons, other carpets, crops, and even fire. Although, that one might not go too well. There are so many potions in the game now. So many that I barely even remember how to craft half of them. Or any of them. But that's not an issue for this secret potion, literally called the Uncraftable Potion. As the name suggests, you can't craft it or even obtain it in survival mode. Drinking it does absolutely nothing, but it looks kind of pretty, I guess. Something you can craft that I bet you don't know about is the end rod. I've spent so long raiding end cities for these, but it turns out you can just craft them with some chorus fruit and a blaze rod. The more you know, I guess. Tipped arrows are more useful than you realize. You can use harming arrows with a piercing crossbow to deal tons of damage to multiple mobs at a time, and even collect the arrows after. And if you hit yourself with a slow falling arrow, you'll fly super high when using a Riptide Trident, allowing yourself to float for miles with an Elytra. And speaking of Elytras, remember when firework rockets didn't exist so we had to use punch bows to boost ourselves? Or am I just really old? You're old, son. Here's a trick to play on AFK players. Why not build a maze around them? In fact, why not make the walls out of falling lava for some extra spice? Get real dangerous with this deadly portal trick. Just drop some activated TNT into an end portal, but don't go in yourself. The TNT will only explode in the end when someone is there. So wait for your friend to go in first. All the TNT you drop there will explode at the same time, sending your friend sky high! This secret little trick makes it look like this hole is full of water, but the water is actually only a block deep. Using pistons and slime blocks, you can create a floating block of water that doesn't fall. Once your friend swims down through it, it's a straight drop to their death! This trick makes it look like a regular mining tunnel, but there's a secret. If you place redstone ore into the floor and connect that to a hidden observer, this ore becomes a trap trigger. Hide some TNT under that and your friend won't know what hit him. This trick is so murky 
lucky I can barely even see? This is because you can hide campfires underneath your friend's flooring, and the smoke will float up through. Put as many as you can, and they'll have to tear up their house just to get rid of them. Weeping vines can be a lifesaver, so don't make the mistake of forgetting to bring some to the nether. You can't use water there, so to get down from a high place, put a weeping vine up, use bone meal, and it will grow as a perfect ladder down to safety. Needing to know where one biome begins and another ends can be so important. Don't make it hard to see the line between them. Turn off the biome blend option. The hard line between biomes might look weird, but it's so useful. It's worth it. When trapping villagers or animals, the biggest mistake is not using honey. Put it under their feet so they can't jump out of their pen. You'll never have trouble with escaped villagers again. Get that efficiency enchantment on your shovel, but don't make the mistake of going past efficiency 4. It actually can't get faster, so you're wasting your time and experience. One of the oldest myths in Minecraft is that sugar canes grow faster on sand. So I'm here to finally solve this debate. I've placed 25 sugar cane on every type of sand and dirt. And when I type this command, we'll be able to see exactly which group grows fastest. And see, they all grow at pretty much the same exact speed. It's just random. It doesn't even change if you grow it on cobblestone or something, even though it does look super cursed. Consider that myth ultra busted. Look, we all know how strong the warden is, but I've heard it's so strong that it doesn't even take damage from fire. Okay, lava doesn't damage him, and neither does regular fire. What about fire enchantments? Yeah, it doesn't affect him at all. I guess it would be kind of easy if you could just dump lava on him and run away. Myth confirmed. And apparently, wardens have so much health they can survive a drop from the very top of the world all the way down to bedrock. So let's test it. Yeah, it survives. It turns out you'd have to drop the warden exactly 504 blocks to instantly kill it, which is literally impossible in a normal world. This thing is so powerful. Speaking of enchantment, it's a mistake not to get the mending enchantment first. If you get other enchantments first and leave mending too late, you could break that item accidentally or get that too expensive message, stopping you from enchanting it at all. Nether gold can be really useful in getting gold for the piglins, but it's a mistake to mine it normally because all you get are nuggets. Use a silk touch pickaxe and smelt the ore in a furnace and you'll get a whole ingot instead, which you can trade to the piglins directly. Burning a lot of coal in your furnace? Don't just put a big stack of coal in the furnace. Combine nine coal into a block and use that in the furnace. It actually burns longer than nine coal on their own. Don't get lost in your new mine. The best way to keep track of where you've been, where you're going, and what you're going to do next is to put down signs. Seems simple, but so many people make the mistake of exploring without leaving a trail of signs telling you how to get home. It can also make a great to-do list. But what if I told you this myth says cat are even more powerful. Sure, they only have literally 2% of the Warden's health, but they have a special secret. No matter how far you drop them from, they won't take any damage. Apparently, this is because in real life, cats can literally fall from 200 feet up and survive. You're so much better than a dog. Hey! I didn't kill it. I'm still keeping my promise. But what about us? For some reason, landing in just an inch of water is enough to completely survive any fall. So, I mean, a watermelon is mostly water. Surely that can save me, right? Yeah, no. But berry bushes can. Right. 1.20 finally added armor customization with armor trims. But did they add the ability for our horses to get dripped with us. All right, it doesn't work with diamond. What about leather? Oh, I guess not. Looks like it does work for turtle shells, though, for extra swag for us. Sorry, horsey. Oh, and by the way, if you have a looting 255 sword and kill a screaming goat, you'll actually get a secret goat horn that plays a super special sound. Oh, wait, there's one last myth. If you don't subscribe, Wuffle meets his torturous and fiery fate. Would you look at that? Wow, you really didn't subscribe. Your loss, I guess.